Uh, I must firstly introduce Graham Joy. Now, Graham is the first and only Australian to ski both the North Pole and Magnetic North Pole. As a member of the International Ice Walk Expedition Team, he travelled for 56 days over a thousand kilometres, enduring temperatures that plummeted to minus 60 degrees Celsius to achieve his dream of reaching the North Pole. Now, leadership, preparation, building the right sort of team, individual excellence, team motivation and success, all of the sorts of things that are really vital in business were, on an expedition like this, absolutely essential to get right, because if you get it wrong, you die. Now, Graham subsequently achieved another incredible feat when he ski sailed to the magnetic North Pole a 19-day trek it was, unguarded and alone for all but the last day and a half, when, probably much to his chagrin, he had to team up with the Canadian expedition when his radio communication failed. Now, Graham has led expeditions to the summits of the highest mountains of North America, Africa and Antarctica. He has sea kayaked the southeast coast of Greenland and, a little closer to home, achieved the first unassisted sea kayak crossing of Bass Strait. I can tell you he's dragged a few business types along on some of those treks and has returned them home safely as well. But when he's not scaling mountains or trekking across icy wastes, Graham runs a company that conducts specialist leadership and team development programs. And I think you'd agree that there would be few people better placed to articulate the importance of your business of leadership styles, effective decision making and highly effective high performance teams. On that note, would you please welcome Graham Joy. Thanks very much Tracy. Excuse me. Now I know what you, from good to great, achieving success, that's about how we got to the North Pole. You don't get to the North Pole by just being good, you get there by being very, very, very good. But let's start with the stuff that you're probably interested in the most. First of all, what's it like to get to the North Pole? What's it like to travel to the North Pole? <laughs> well, it's the sort of ministry of strange hairdos. You heard the minus 50 odd, you know, temperature thing, you get quite a bit of frost on the face. People look rather amusing. It can be kind of challenging. You get the really tough days where everybody just sort of hunkers down. There's this Hiroshi Onishi and the, you know, all you see of him the whole day is just the, you know, the eyelashes and the eyes. Um, I know you're all eating, but I, I can't resist telling you this one. <coughs> when you get a couple of resupplies, you can have people incubating the flu that were involved in the resupply and you don't know. Um, when you get the flu in the Arctic, yeah, well, it's pretty much like getting it here, really. You feel bad, but your nose keeps running. Your handkerchief, it's only a really a one-use item. You then get to sort of snort out one nostril and the other, look carefully, you'll see some people really aren't very good at it. <laughs> so I knew that would get you focused on your lunch. <clears throat> and then others thinking, I'll avoid all this frost on my beard thing, put on the neoprene face mask, which is great, and uh, underneath this roof has got a really lush beard as well, and what he hasn't realised is, his nose has been running as well, and through the breathing holes you can see the icicles. <laughs> as he got to the first rest stop to have a drink, and you know, it wouldn't come off, so there was much frivolity from the rest of us. Now, and you've all got strong stomachs. I know this is about the reality of what it's like day to day to get to the North Pole. The horrible stuff you imagine. Frostbite on the toes, Daryl's feet, Arvid's fingertips, the mistakes you can make, you know, when you, you should be on the ball, but you let your guard down because you're so used to doing it. So, a little bit of frostbite on all the fingers. I sound flippant because I didn't get any, so, you know, it's uh, one of those things where you look and go, gee, that's nasty, like that. And the real tester about, you know, are you really in here for the long haul? Can you, can you handle it when things really, really go wrong? Daryl's heels, last 20 odd days. The team, eight of us, seven different countries to the North Pole, to be the most international team that had gotten there from the Canadian land edge. What was the journey like? Well, you travel down the beach, did it this good visual stuff, heading into the pressure ridge zone, lovely. <coughs> then it turns to this, pretty rubbly, pretty rough, day after day. So if you haven't trained and planned for this, it's really going to knock your team over. There is not a shadow of a doubt. People fall over a fair bit, 
it's about learning how to you know, go with the flow a bit so you don't break your ribs, break your leg, etc. Then there's always these guys. I had to put this up. A friend of mine sent me the postcard. I lift you grab. Is that concept just a little too complex, Carl? <laughs> when you're out there, whether you think you're going to or not, you think about these guys. You see their tracks. Lots of them. This is a National Geographic photo. I was talking to Stacey earlier from Small Business saying, you know, I, went, I did the whole polar bear thing up near Churchill and they look wonderful and, and they do. But you know, the wonder factor, when you're on foot and they're 50 metres away, they don't look wonderful. <laughs> they are absolutely and utterly terrifying. Three calls the way to the pole, you get this sort of zone of convergence stuff, the rough ice that people talk about endlessly. There's a mountain range underneath the ocean and it sort of churns it. So we travel through this day after day, three days. Not really gratifying, hard work, hard slog. About a kilometre an hour. We uh, went forward 30k, we went back 36 in those three days. Pretty tough psychologically. Then you get into the whole sort of decision making, lots of lanes of open water. So you get a bit of a view of what this journey is like now. It varies from good ice to bad ice, to little mini crevasses, to flat ice, to polar bear tracks, and then you're at the North Pole, 56 days later. Wonderful. And it's flat. It's not like being on the mountain, you know, where you can stand there and go, well, I'm obviously on the top. This looks pretty much the same as the last 20 days. <laughs> Trust me, it does. You need your GPS, you know, to work out it. And then there's all those who will say, but were you really there? Well, you know what we did? Of course, you've got to prove it these days. We got the Argos satellite transmitter, we worked out the rate of flow of the ocean, we put about a kilometre grid square, and we carried it round for like two hours. Go up, down, you like a checkerboard? So you're going to get it. We got down to within about 50 metres, so we thought that was pretty good. Not that we knew which 50 metres it actually was, but, uh, because the sea ice keeps moving. Okay, the second bit, the travelling alone bit. Ski sailing. This is when I caught up with these Canadian guys and uh, heading out there with a big ski sail out in front of you. Wonderful. Got to do that one day in 19. I'd intended to do it the whole way. Put up 120 k's in the day. Fantastic. What does it do for you? Ruins you forever wanting to tow the sled again. <laughs> you sit there and you go, there'll be another windy day. There'll be another day when I can put up three and a half days of travel. Didn't really happen. Met up with the dog sled guys. That's pretty amusing. 500 kilometers from everywhere anywhere and you wander into someone's camp and then yeah, what are you doing? Oh, skiing to the magnetic pole, what are you doing? Yeah, the same. The same. I suppose. What else would you be doing up there in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> and it's not, you know, on the personal journey, that's not too challenging. It's about 25, 30 below. So if you've skied in, you know, North America, Europe, you get those sort of temperatures. So that, the whole temperature challenge isn't that great. This is, though. And this is the real deal. This is when I was travelling with the Canadian guys. Polar bear, mum, the two kids. It brings to mind, in the days before I was with them, <clears throat> what I like to think of as a definition of paranoia. Just because you think you're paranoid doesn't mean that no one's following you. <laughs> <laughs> think about that one. It becomes one of the most unfortunate mantras you can ever get in your head. And it goes round and round and round for day after day. Okay, 